Hi everyone, and welcome to a, another Title Cycles video. This one is actually going to be a little bit of a short Haskell tutorial, because um, there's a lot of things about this fun, neat little language that people don't really tend to learn um, when doing Title Cycles. Um, you know, a lot of people have learned a little bit about function application, maybe even defining them, but things like algebraic data types, pattern matching, do notation, like these, these things sometimes are a little more ambiguous. So let's just go through a short example together. And we'll start by talking about how to define an algebraic data type. It's pretty simple. Start with the word data, and then a name that has to start with a capital letter. Heck, why not? And there can be Lowercase letters after this, but we'll get to those soon. We won't do it first. Okay, now you need, this is the name of the type. And then after the name of the type, you then need uh, constructors, which are basically like functions used to make elements of the type. So we're going to say dog. And the dog is going to have in it a double. And then the pipe says, yeah, that's the end of one constructor. Here's another constructor. In this case, we'll say cat with no argument after it. Okay, so we evaluate that and it's now defined. So how, what do we do with it? Well, let's, uh, let's show you how to do pattern matching. I'm gonna write a little function called pet to mod. And what this is, is going to take a, um, it's, uh, it's going to take a, uh, a pet, which is a, a it's, it's basically, it's going to take a thing of type heck, and it's going to return something. Um, it's going to, um, We'll get to it in a second, I'll define it. But uh, the important part is that to start, we need to pattern match. So we can take a dog, which has a number inside it. And we're gonna just use this little special Haskell keyword undefined, which we can do because basically it's a cheat that lets you type check, but you can't run the code. writing this, you know, basically function that consumes them and gives something back. In this case, we're going to do something a little silly. We're going to say, um, store of d over 2. And we're going to say over here, uh, pan of brand. Okay. Now, watch what's this, this isn't going to work, I'll tell you why. So, this error down here. Ah, it says that it expe distort expects a pattern of doubles, but this is just a double. Well, here's your first taste of monadic programming, which is that if you say type of return is it takes a thing and then returns it to a monad of a thing. A pattern is a monad. So we can say return D and then it turns that. So it turns it into a pattern instead of just a, a number. Okay. So let's see, does that run? And it does. Cool. So we need a producer of these things. We need to make them. I'm just going to make a weird little function. I'm going to call it hecker. And now we're going to introduce do notation for monads. So you say do, yeah, indent sum. 
and then so we're going to take a random number. So this is basically creating a variable binding, except that it's specifically a variable binding that involves running a monad. And in this case, the pattern monad. So you can think that the pattern monad is just giving you all the elements of the pattern as time progresses. So we're pulling out random numbers. And then what are we going to do with it? We're going to say if r is greater than 0 0.6 then uh, I'm going to indent this return dog of D else return cat okay so that should uh, that should run and uh, Okay, so that runs. Cool. So, how do we use it? We need the return here because, again, we're taking the thing that's a. Uh, we want to return a pattern of hex, not just a single hex. And in fact, you know, what we're essentially doing is we're transforming random numbers and turning them into these things. So now we can combine this together and say so this should work. Oh, oh right. This was the last thing I was going to explain. It's another bit about patterns, uh, about bonnets. So there's this function, which takes, uh, so if you think of where the m is as pattern, so it takes pattern of a's and a function that takes a's, turns them into a pattern of b's, and then combines it into a pattern of b's. So in this case, our pattern of a's is this. And we're trying to turn it into a, a pattern of control maps. So, so what we're doing is we actually want to say and that should combine correctly and uh, So uh, you can hear that that works right, and um, that's our little example of making a function control. You know, uh, making a uh, making new data type and uh, making a functions to produce it, functions to consume it, and then actually using it in something, doing something. I mean, this example is kind of kind of just silly, but there's is cool stuff you can do with this. And we'll explore that more tomorrow. So, um, till then, take care.